The following is a special presentation of HBO Sports. HBO smash hit series Boxing After Dark. You'll see an up-and-coming knockout artist, former Marine Obed Sullivan, taking on savvy heavyweight Buster Mathis Jr. Then longtime light heavyweight champion Virgil Hill returns home to make yet another North Dakota title defense, this time against native New Yorker Lou Delbao. It's a big night in Grand Forks, North Dakota. You look at Sadie McQuaid from down the road in Fargo as she prepares for her breakout role as a round card girl. And the writers at ringside are tapping away about the night that HBO Sports came to town to show North Dakota's signal devotion to its longtime light heavyweight champion, Virgil Hill. Here on the campus of the University of North Dakota in Grand Forks, the Engelstad Arena, a hockey arena, is jammed with more than 7,000 boxing fans for the 21st time in Virgil Hill's career that he has fought before his home state crowd. First, a 12-round heavyweight bout in which two fighters will be trying to polish their credentials for further action in the division. Hello again, everybody. I'm Jim Lampley. Welcome to the third installment of Boxing After Dark, which has produced great action in its first two incarnations. Before we get to the fights, I want to mention that Larry Merchant is not here working with us tonight. He's spending the weekend with his ailing father. And Larry, our thoughts and prayers are with both you and your dad tonight. Our normal expert commentator Roy Jones is also away on family business, so it's our privilege tonight to be working, as is so frequently the case in this situation, with the man who fills in so well for us, legendary fight trainer and manager Gil Clancy. Gil, welcome aboard again. Let's get ready for the heavyweight bout between Sullivan and Mathis Jr. What's the biggest difference between the two fighters? Well, the big, biggest difference is quality of opposition and experience, and Mathis has them both. And again, Mathis has gone 10 or more rounds nine times, Obed Sullivan has only gone 10 rounds once. A big edge for Mathis in experience. Sullivan, the former Marine, a hard puncher, comes in here on short notice, replacing Lou Savarese, who was originally expected to be the opponent for Mathis Jr. He fell ill. This creates an opportunity for Sullivan, but only 11 days notice, and he fought within the past two weeks. Good or bad? No, it's a great opportunity for Sullivan. He says he feels great. He likes to fight this way. He was in good condition, didn't have a chance to slop up. He's ready, and he says he's going to give a real good performance tonight. All right, both fighters are already in the ring, so let's take a look. Buster Mathis, you'll remember from his battle with Mike Tyson in December, he was KO'd in the third round. That's his only loss, 21 wins. He had the no contest with Riddick Bowe about a year and a half ago. Seven KOs for the relatively light-hitting Mathis Jr. On the other hand, Obed Sullivan is regarded as a rising puncher of some note. Sullivan comes in with a seven-bout win streak. He's hoping to vault himself up onto that level where he can be considered along with Andrew Galata, David Tua, Courage Shabalala, some of the other rising young names in the heavyweight division. A win tonight would help to get him to that stage. And we take a look at the tail of the tape for these two heavyweights. And interestingly, they weigh the same, though of course their bodies are dramatically different. Sullivan, two years older than Mathis. Mathis gives up three inches in height. Both guys weighed in at 230, and you see the eight-inch reach advantage 
for Obed Sullivan. Rules of the bout with our unofficial ringside scorer, Harold Letterman. The Obed Sullivan Buster Mathis Jr. fight is scheduled for 12 rounds. There is no standing eight count, no three knockdown rule. Only the referee can stop the fight, and you cannot be saved by the bell in any round, including the 12th and final round. Jim. Thank you, Harold. Let's go to ring announcer Danny Campbell for the pre-fight introductions. Ladies and gentlemen, fight fans all across the world, Good evening and welcome to the beautiful Ingolstadt Arena here in Grand Forks, North Dakota. And the King of Bears, Budweiser, HBO Sports, the Network of Champions, along with Cedric Kistner Promotions presents HBO Boxing After Dark. All these bouts are under the auspices of the North Dakota Athletic Control Board, Executive Director at Ringside, Miss Mary Feist. This bout will be governed under the rules of the International Boxing Federation, President Robert W. Lee. Judges assigned for this championship bout are David Hess, Kevin McCarl, and Mark Nelson. And the third man in the ring, in control of the action, at the sound of the bell, referee Denny Nelson. Ladies and gentlemen, this co-feature bout of the evening for the IBF Intercontinental Heavyweight Championship, scheduled for 12 rounds of action. Let me introduce first the challenger. He tipped the scales this afternoon at 230 and three quarter pounds, wearing the all black trunks with a professional record of 21 wins against one defeat, seven of those wins via knockout. He is the former USBA heavyweight champion from Grand Rapids, Michigan. Ladies and gentlemen, introducing Buster Mathis yeah. Jr. Protect yourself at all times. Good luck. Good luck. Good luck. Good luck. Obed Sullivan coming in. Says about the technician, Mathis, kind of a cutie who has given a lot of more powerful fighters considerable trouble. He says, I'm going to pretend for the first couple of rounds that he doesn't have a head. I want to wear him out to the body before I ever begin to throw punches to the head. Well, you know, talking about wearing him out, again, Sullivan has only had one 10 round fight Mathis has been 12 rounds a few times and uh, he oh, does have good what? stamina but I would uh, I would also want my fighter to be uh, banging to the body with Mathis and bring his hands down so he can hit him on the chin he's a very difficult target to hit good head good head Go. movement Go and he has very quick hands on the inside Buster Mathis Go. Jr. does Mathis now trained by Kevin Rooney inheritor to the tradition of Castamato and D'Amato, of course, trained Buster's dad. In fact, Buster's middle name is D'Amato. Race, race. There again, Sullivan threw a good left hook to the body, but Mathis returned three solid punches. Very quick hands, Mathis. Not a big puncher, but a busy guy. In close quarters, both punchers trying to get in the body shots. That could add up to success later on in the fight. And Jim, with these guys banging heads the way they are so early, you can look for one or both of these guys to get cut. Early on, Buster Mathis Jr. has been holding Obed Sullivan's left arm against his rib cage, and you heard the referee moments ago saying, "Stop holding him." He just warned uh, Sullivan for a low blow too, and uh, if he's going to be very efficient that way, that could that could affect uh, Sullivan's body attack. Good left hook by Sullivan. The short left hook inside is regarded as Obed Sullivan's best punch, and that may be what Mathis has in mind. 
as he continually locks his arm, his right arm around the outside of Sullivan's left and tries to pin that arm into inaction. Meanwhile, those heads are banging together pretty good. You saw Mathis land the little counter shot in there. He's very effective at countering inside against bigger punchers like Sullivan. Sullivan, true to his claim that he'll go to the body, is working the ribcage over and over here in this first round. And Sullivan really doesn't have that much experience, but he's throwing beautiful short punches on the inside. And he's maneuvering around pretty good, too. Five years in the Marine Corps for Obed Sullivan. He took up boxing while he was in the Marines, had no amateur career to speak of, and he is every bit the former Marine in his personal presentation. Yes, sir. No, sir. I will do as you say, sir. Both fighters landed good, solid punches in that exchange. It's been an active first round, and mostly fought at close quarters. Who benefits from this, Gil? Well, Obed Sullivan is the sharper puncher on the inside, and he can hurt you. But if, it, if it's a fight that goes the distance, Mathis throws a lot more punches on the inside. Quick uppercut for Obed Sullivan. Buster Mathis showing his ability to count. Right. Hard left hook by Sullivan. And Mathis was hurt with that left hook. No question about it. Great. Best punch of the round. Sullivan's punctuating left hook in the closing seconds. Lean back. That wasn't bad. That wasn't bad. That wasn't bad. Spit that out. <laughs> How you feel? All right. Where's the jab? Get that. Get that mouth. Get his mouth. Get his mouth. Where's the jab? What happened to the jab? Where's the jab? started just slide backs, slide back, straight slide back angle. As soon as you get your slide back, you get your weight on And there's another left hook at the, or another look, I should say, at the solid left hook by Obed Sullivan at the end of the round. And you can see Mathis wobble a little bit with that left hook. Sullivan maneuvers himself pretty good on the inside at gym for a guy with not that much experience. Sullivan's trainer, whom you heard in the corner, is Chuck McGregor. If you think you might have seen his face before, maybe you were watching when Scott Walker went against Julio Cesar Chavez on our Chavez De La Hoya doubleheader in Vegas a couple of months ago. McGregor trains Scott Walker, the pink cat, as well. Round two begins, and Sullivan trying to follow up on the damage he did with that short left hook at the end of round one. He's giving opportunities to Mathis to counter, and Mathis is taking those opportunities. It's becoming a slugfest, though, and this will not be good for Buster. Break. This is some pace for big men. What a pace. Through 100 punches between them in round one, and they are heating up to a faster pace now. You see that Harold Letterman had Sullivan winning the first, and we'll show you Harold's card from round to round as we go along. He talked about the two heads butting together in round one, and Obed Sullivan is bleeding heavily now from a cut on the right eyelid. That's a big cut, Jim, in a dangerous spot. Blood will go right into the eye. The, the cut man's going to have to have, do some good job on this cut. But again, it was the, these heads. When heads clash like that, something has to happen. And unfortunately, it happened to Sullivan. We saw it a week ago with Wilfredo Rivera against Rennell Whitaker down in San Martin. Rivera managed to stay in the fight the whole way despite the deep cut on his forehead. This one is in a more dangerous spot between the eyebrow and the eyelid. It's in a very bad spot, Jim. And if, that's, if that's in that eye socket, it's a very, very dangerous spot. So in a moment, we will check with Harold on the rule regarding this. Right now, there's a lot of action. Obed Sullivan tries to fight his way past the danger created by that bad cut over his right eye. Unfortunate that he got cut, to Jim. He showed me an awful lot in a short time, Sullivan. Good punch with either hand. 
and good technique. Has wobbled Mathis a couple of times. not getting the kind of punching room against Ovid Sullivan that he got, for instance, in his bout with Tyson in December. Well, Kevin Looney told him to use a jab between rounds, but both fighters are just standing a jab. They're both making a war out of it on the inside. Hard right hand inside by Mathis. Sullivan goes back to the left hook and wobbles Mathis again. Buster throwing wildly and down he goes. No, oh, no. And Buster. Referee's going to rule it a slip. Mathis didn't react as if it was a slip, Jim. I thought it was a knockdown. Yeah. Let me take a look at it, Doc. It's just a scratch. Stop that real bad. Look at it. Yeah. Can you see it? Yeah. Relax. Relax. Stay with me. It's nothing but a neck. Chuck McGregor does his own cut work, Gil. And it's in a bad spot. It's in that don't eye socket. Don't smother him so much. Give yourself some room. Touch with the couple. And how and with slide. these rules, what is the rule on a headbutt? If the referee called it an accidental headbutt, it would have to go six rounds before we go to scorecards. It becomes a no contest if it stopped here. If, if they stop it before the sixth round, it's a no contest. Nobody would win. In essence, it's a technical draw, but they Regardless call it a no of contest. what's on the cards, Exactly. Harold. They don't go to the scorecards until six rounds have been completed on an accidental headbutt. Gil, what about trainers that do their own cut work? Well, well Jim, I can't knock them because I did my own cut I know work you all did. the time I was training fighters. If the guy knows his business, he knows his business. You know, you just don't know. There are specialists as far as cut men are concerned, but, uh, for example, Angelo Dundee, he does his own cut work, and he's one of the best in the business. Bleeding temporarily stopped now as Sullivan comes out for round three. This is the round in which Tyson was able to get to Mathis. And look at that head. Look at that head on the inside with Mathis, right on the cut. No quite. Look at that head going back and forth. Both fighters landing in close quarters. Sullivan, as usual, landing the harder blows. to see if Buster Mathis is cut as well, or is the blood on Mathis's face a product of the cut on Sullivan's eye? No, Mathis is now cut over the left eye, and if those heads keep banging together like this, Jim, we're going to see a lot more blood than we've even seen thus far. But look at those punches by Sullivan. He is an impressive-looking heavyweight, as far as I'm concerned. You think it might be useful for Sullivan to back off, try to use the jab and create some punching space for himself? Nice combination by Mathis. Five solid punches. Sullivan got to him with a short right hand inside. He gets him with another short right. Both fighters able to counter effectively inside, and the crowd loves it. I'd like to see Sullivan go on the outside and start using his stiff jab. That's what I'd like to see, too. I think he ought to create some distance for himself, try to protect that eye, and use his greater punching power from range. Punch out. Come that's on. Exactly. That's my thoughts entirely, Jim. And he started out the first round throwing a good jab. We haven't seen one since. Blood flowing from both fighters as we reach the midway point of round number three. Head banging action in Grand Forks. Again, Mathis is throwing more punches than Sullivan, but Sullivan's, Sullivan's punches are far more effective. When he lands, he really lands. Plenty of leverage on his punches. Hard right hand shot again by Sullivan. Mathis looked for a moment as though he was going to wobble, but then he held up and began to counter again. Kevin Rooney yelling at Mathis, Bob and Weave, Bob and Weave, come up punching. Sullivan getting off again with the left hand shots. Mathis goes to Sullivan's body. Mathis asked Kevin Rooney to train him for the Tyson fight. Kevin said, I don't think I would have time to get you ready, but check with me after the fight. Mathis did as he was told. Came back to Kevin Rooney after his trainer, Joey Fariello, suddenly died of a stroke eight days after the Tyson fight. Now Mathis is training in Catskill with Rooney. I Sullivan coming forward. Hey, Sullivan step. butted Mathis that time. I mean, a real solid butt. All right, hold it. You got to jam a little bit. What you got to do? Get to the space. Can you see how 
other side, bitch. Oh. Don't, don't, don't do that. Don't even touch it. Don't touch it. Stop touching. It's not going in his eye. Give yourself some room. Take some deep breaths. Come on, another one. Hold it there. Okay. Listen to me. Give yourself some room. You're on the inside. You're killing him, but you're one. Take a deep breath. How about the low blows? No, it's a little yeah. bitty. He got nothing. How about right. the low blows? Now, if he's in the lower... Now, this is a look at Sullivan, and that looks as though it could have been an intentional butt kill. Oh, it was a solid butt. There's no question about that. But uh, I, I think he may have got a little frustrated because Mathis was really using his head an awful lot more than Sullivan was be up until that butt. So both fighters have been butted. Both fighters show the damage. Sullivan's cut is unquestionably deeper and worse than the one above Mathis's left eye. Round four begins. Chuck McGregor suggested briefly to Obed Sullivan that he might ought to back off and try to get some punching range, but it's easier said than done. He's really not trying to use his legs at all, uh, Jim. He's just staying right in there. Both guys trying to prove that they're the tougher of the two. I'd like to see Sullivan skip back, start using a jab, and as you say, give himself a little punching room. Coming a battle of uppercuts here, and you see that Mathis throws about twice as many punches inside as does Ovid Sullivan, and just has been the pattern all along, when Sullivan lands, he lands the heavier blows. And again, Jim, uh, Mathis has had that experience going 12 rounds a few times, 10 rounds or more nine times, and Sullivan has only gone 10 rounds once. So if this, if this fight continues this way, uh, Unless Sullivan is Superman, uh, Mathis should have the, the better of it as the fight goes along. Hey. Hard right hand by Sullivan. Backs Mathis up again. He had a little room that time, Jim. That's why that punch was so effective. Wonder if he'll learn something from it. If he stays out, uses his jab, and sets up with some range, I think he's got a chance to whack Buster out of there. And I'm not sure it's going to happen if he keeps leaning in here inside on it. And Mathis, as you know, and as Gill set up before the fight, is the more durable fighter and the one with much more experience in the later rounds. Oh, come on, Wait a minute. Come on. Watch the butt. Come on, you watch the butt. Come on. Watch your hand. And Sullivan is losing his cool now, Jim. He's beginning to box. He's beginning to use a jab. He's really angry in there. There's, they're banging those heads again, together again. Well, as we mentioned, there's a vast experience gap. Buster's been around the ring a lot longer, even though he's two years younger. Sullivan hurts him again inside, and Mathis holds on. <laughs> I was in Sullivan's corner, I'd tell him to box, stay on the outside, use that jab, and insist that he do it. Because these heads are more dangerous than the punches. Four bloody rounds in the books for Mathis Jr. and Obed Sullivan. Crowd rises in appreciation for the action. Here in Grand Forks, North Dakota, Virgil Hill, the native son, still yet to fight. Harold Letterman, how do you have this one through four? Jim, 40 to 36, four rounds to nothing, Obed Sullivan. He seems to be hurting him with the hardest shots. But I want to tell you, both cuts were caused by accidental headbutts. I, I talked to referee Denny Nelson. If this fight is stopped before the sixth round, it becomes a no contest no matter who. Now, now Denny Nelson is motioning to us. I mean, he don't win, do he? He ain't fighting me. He said that Obed Sullivan can't see out of his eye. They're stopping the fight. This fight will become a no contest. And Harold, I agree with you on the score. I've given Sullivan all four rounds. He's a very impressive heavyweight as far as I'm concerned. Uh, what do you think about the stoppage? We get paid, we go home, we ain't lost nothing, right? It's just unfortunate because Sullivan showed me an awful lot, Jim. What, what about you? 
Well, I thought Sullivan looked uh, like a strong fighter with a terrific punch and looked as though he had a good learning experience ahead of him here tonight, and, and it's going to be truncated by these unfortunate circumstances. And the crowd isn't going to like it. Referee doing his best to protect the fighters and their welfare. I'm not really sure that it's accurate or fair to say that Sullivan couldn't see out of that eye. Well, I don't. I, I don't think that it's fair to say that either. I mean, the, 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 the cut is a terrible cut, but it's not bleeding. It's not bleeding into his eye. So unless he got some medication in his eye, I don't see why he couldn't see. The referee, Danny Nelson, has been around. He's a veteran of the game, although mostly in relatively backwater circumstances like this. We're not talking about a guy who has had exposure to a lot of big fights and big name fighters. But right here, you have a circumstance where you're going to get a technical draw, a stoppage after four rounds, blood on both fighters, no contest, and I'm not sure what was gained for either Obed Sullivan or Buster Mathis Jr. here tonight. Harold Letterman. I think for the Intercontinental title held by Obed Sullivan, he retains his title. I, I mean, that's the only thing that comes out of this. Uh, referee Denny Nelson went to the corner and observed that Obed Sullivan couldn't see out of his right eye because of the uh, blood going into the eye. And he came over and he told me that because Obed Sullivan couldn't see, he stopped the fight. The cut was caused by an accidental headbutt. And because it was stopped before the uh, end of the sixth round, it becomes a no contest. So that, that's the story. Neither guy gains anything. It'll make a great rematch. Harold, you've seen a lot of fights. D do you think that Obed Sullivan couldn't see out of that eye? I'm sure that he couldn't see out of that eye because I know referee Danny Nelson, one of the finest referees in the world, an experienced man, a veteran of about 30 title fights. You couldn't get a better referee. If he was in a corner and he said that Obed Sullivan couldn't see, bet your life he couldn't. Couldn't get a better referee than Danny Nelson? No. Danny's one of the best. All right. Let's quickly take a look at a replay. This is when Sullivan got cut. And this would be early in the bout. First round, as a matter of fact. Boom. Unquestionably, that's an accidental headbutt that causes a deep cut. And this is what happened later when, in round three, Sullivan, in his own frustration, appeared to be wanting to give back as good as he got to Buster Mathis. And as a result of the headbutting activity, we get an incomplete result. Now let's go up to Danny Campbell for the uh, official announcement on this one. Ladies and gentlemen, due to the fact that the cut was created by an accidental butt and the fight did not exceed six rounds, this fight is a no decision. So there you have it, no decision, and let's go to Gil Clancy in the ring with uh, the man who appeared to be headed toward possible victory, but won't get it tonight, Obed Sullivan. Obed, that was just a tough break, tough break all around for everybody, but as far as I'm concerned, you certainly impressed me as a coming heavyweight. Uh, you didn't lose the fight, but you, you do have a bad cut, but it was just unfortunate, but you showed me an awful lot in that ring, uh, Obed. Gil, I just got one thing to say. And if I had fought the type of fight that my trainer had instructed me to fight, he wouldn't have had the opportunity to headbutt me. So, you know, I, I am so upset with myself because all I had to do was follow a simple game plan because Chuck warned me he comes in with his head like Tyson. And so you're going to get cut, and, and lo and behold, I get my head opened up. This is not the type of debut performance that I wanted to, to show for the HBO viewers. I am totally disgusted. Well you, well, you certainly weren't disgraced, but uh, I'd have to agree with Chuck. Uh, we thought that if you stayed on the outside, use your left definitely, jab definitely. and gave yourself a little room, More but room. Uh, but you, you took the fight inside, and right in the first round, when I saw the way you were fighting the fight, I said that both of these guys are going to get cut, or, or they should, and that's what happened. It was just an unfortunate thing. But Obed, you showed me an awful lot. You, showed, you looked like a very experienced fighter to me and a dangerous fighter. So you'll be back, I'm sure of that. We almost had him out. We almost had him out, guys. I just want to apologize again to HBO viewers. I want to apologize to my family. I want to apologize to all the commentators and all the representatives of HBO because they have so much faith in me and they believe me. A young fighter coming up, 
I'm just upset that I displayed myself, that I didn't follow my corner. So, you know, a hard, a hard head makes a soft behind, and I'm living proof to that tonight. But well, it's not going to happen again, Gil. Well, you'll be back. There's no question about that. You showed an awful lot of ability, uh, Obed. And congratulations again for giving us a good performance. I'm Thank sure you didn't disgrace yourself on HBO. Thank you. Thank you. Well, you get a sense there of the personality of one Lance Corporal Obed Sullivan, 2nd Marine Division, 3rd Battalion, 8th Marines, Lima Company, Camp Lejeune. And he wants to say hello to a Captain Ronald Bailey somewhere in the Marines who is the guy who got him into boxing in the first place. So it winds up as no mark on the record of Sullivan, but we have a sense that you might be seeing that rising young talent again. Meanwhile, Gill's with Buster Mathis Jr. Gill. Uh, but this Buster, that was a real tough fight. Was this guy tougher than you thought he'd be? Oh yeah, you know the guy guys very got got very good skills and uh, and uh, he did his homework. You know, um, I, I'm working on some new things with my uh, new trainer, Captain Rooney, and uh, the guy was very good. You know, you can't take nothing away from him. Well, I, I thought he was he was very impressive as far as I was concerned too. And the way you guys were fighting that fight with, with those heads. Uh, something bound was bound to happen and it happened well you know my, my guy my game is inside fight his game was inside fight so you know bound to happen that was the audience one want something to happen you know and uh, you know I, I'm just very sorry to happen to happen like this but uh, I can wait to confront him again It'd be a different story you know Buster we thought that a couple of times that he hurt you in the fight did you feel that you were hurt at all in his fight no I was, um, I was most, mostly off balance he didn't hurt me at it you know I felt that I was coming on more at the end you know and uh, you know as the fight goes on, I keep on going stronger and stronger and stronger. And, uh, you know, he, yes, he hit me with some good shots, but uh, uh, I came back and uh, I'm planning to hopefully fight him again. Well, I'm sure that the public would like to see it again, providing you guys can keep your heads apart. Yeah, you know, but, uh, you know, this something happened and there's enough, this is my third non, no contest. And uh, and uh, I, I wait, to, wait to see. I, I'm, I'm anxious to fight Lou Savarisi and, uh, and, and other people, you know. and. Uh, I'm going back to school, custom model style, and uh, Kevin Rooney is up there to train me, so I got the best trainer in the world, and uh, you know, I'm just ready to go, you know, back to peekaboo. Okay, well, good luck, guys, and uh, better luck in the future. Now let's go back to Jim at ringside. Thank you. All right, thanks very much, Gil. Buster Mathis Jr., as he himself points out, has a flair for the no contest. It happens more frequently to him than it does to most other fighters. But, uh, well, let's go back to Gil for a final word on the stoppage of the fight. Gil? No decision. Uh, referee, uh, I thought you did an excellent job in this fight because when the cut was open, you did come and inform everybody yes. that it was an accidental butt. I've seen many a referee that uh, really leaves you in the dark. And uh, the way it happened, both fighters were cut and they were, their heads were banging from the opening bell. At, it's just too bad that they didn't stay apart. But I, I, I thought you did a wonderful job. Thank you. And that was the, just the nature of the of the two fighters coming together. It was uh, a headbutt, you know. But otherwise, it was a slam bang fight, I guess. Well, no, they were two good fighters, but they were two billy goats. Yeah. And congratulations again for the job that you did. Thank you. Now let's go back to Jim at ringside. All right. Thanks very much, Gil, and so much for the heavyweight bout that began the evening. Now let's get ready for these 7,000 North Dakotans to blow the lid off the Ingolstadt Arena. We are in Grand Forks, North Dakota, about an hour.